March 5th, 2015. And here we snow again. Wow. I guess this is the three inches that they were talking about that we were still due. And uh, this will be a fun one to shoot. Today, I talk about the Pipulate script, the promotional script that becomes a few things. First, it'll be just me clarifying my thoughts, the important points when introducing Pipulate to the world. Second, it'll be the outline for a PowerPoint-like deck, which will of course be done in Google Slides and have the link inserted on the documentation tab of every Pipulate document, highlighting yet another one of the advantages of going with Google Docs. And thirdly, it'll be the script for an actual video tutorial demo later on. So, speaking of uh, the benefits of using Google Docs for this stuff, uh, I'm going to lead off with the kind of point where, you know, one of the biggest problems with tools is changing your daily workflow, introducing yet another thing into your already uh, overflowing box of tools and then having to get good at it and then having to remember to use it and uh, perhaps paying for it and keeping this license renewed and all the things that come hand in hand with uh, professional tools of the trade. Well, many of you out there dare I say most of you, especially in the SEO and social media field, are already using Google Docs and Google Spreadsheets in particular to keep track of data for yourself, to analyze, to export from other tools and to analyze, and to collaborate with clients. Uh, Excel is used more often for sending carefully formatted uh, and branded deliverables to clients because it creates this sense of ownership where people can hand files around within their organization and have a uh, special feeling, you know, being the first one on the email chains and such. And in that sense, the real competition for Pipulate is plugins made for Excel, which is always something I'm thinking about and really I want to do, but haven't found a, a good way given that fast development time using a web API through Google Docs uh, continues to uh, reassert itself as one of the uh, things making the project possible. Uh, while this is totally doable in a zillion other ways, the thing that makes the data alive and in front of you where you need it and in the place you work anyway is Google Spreadsheets. And hence, Pipulate is something you do inside a tool you use anyway, and it's not really the introduction of a new tool into your repertoire, or at least a very small one. I'm trying to contain Pipulate's footprint down to a bookmarklet that goes in your browser so that you can trigger it off in context-sensitive ways. While you're on sites other than Google Spreadsheets, it'll trigger a crawl or the collection of data off of social media profiles such as Twitter and Facebook. Uh, and uh, a number of other context-sensitive behaviors I can give it, given that you have a web page displaying when you hit the bookmarklet. And uh, another way that it's lightweight in your workflow is that while it does pop up its own user interface, which is unlike my old system, which didn't even have a user interface, it was just the, the bookmarklet itself and then an iframe that showed you it was working that popped up on the site you're crawling or within Google Spreadsheets. But this time, Pipulate opens its own separate window where you can see the process taking place. And, uh, but all the user has to do is hit the one button Pipulate. So it is a two-click process instead of a one-click process. You have to hit the bookmarklet to start it going and then hit the Get Pipulating button to start. Uh, but that provides a user interface hook. Hey, dog, you're getting snowy. For lots of little things, like say you were to trigger a crawler without actually being on the site you want to start crawling from, well, you need to 
have a place to tell it what URL to begin crawling from. If you have any uh, forced inclusion or forced exclusion patterns, the click depths you want it to travel to, and etc. So, having the second click before pipulating gives this place where uh, usually mobile oriented user interface, simple on off toggles, maybe fill in, in some text fields, you know, configuration screen stuff, the kind of stuff you would see in a, you know, an iPhone or Android, you know, settings. Uh, page for an app. Uh, that's what Pipulate has. And that is, in fact, the setup for using this thing on mobile because uh, all this stuff will work equally well on mobile, which, by the way, reminds me. I want to get into the point about addiction because to use Pipulate once is to instantly become addicted because you choose the sample data that you're interested in Pipulating and then uh, you go into your Google Spreadsheets on your phone. And as you can see here, I have it set on hourly and my subscriptions on YouTube, if I scroll to the top, you can see when I started this experiment, it was 4,367 subscribers on count number one. And I have an ISO date time uh, field there to track the exact time. And on uh, iteration 31, we're at 4,333. And you can see how the subscribers grew. And hourly is almost too much for that kind of thing. But while I'm in testing hourly, it is. I am sure I'll switch it to daily. And probably my recommendation for people doing this stuff will be to do daily. And uh, since it's using Google Spreadsheets as the database, and there still is a server in the picture, uh, and the Google Data API is not 100% reliable, I have a few things going on. First, on every hour, it'll loop through the task three times, so that if anything failed uh, on a prior pass, it has two more attempts uh, to succeed. And that is, in addition, to all the internal retries that occur when it can't reach the API. So if the API is down for, say, five minutes or so, uh, just because of a Google hiccup, no problem, all your data will be recorded properly. And even so, I'm adding one of my to-do items uh, on Pipulate. Since there's a server in the background, but I want this thing to be so remarkably uh, stateless, it's not a functional programming app, but I'm using as much of the functional programming principles as possible. The only thing stateful in the whole system, beside from the time when Pipulate is actually churning through a task, is in the spreadsheet itself. Then after a job runs, it completely unattaches itself from the server and doesn't know about the server's existence again until the scheduled event triggers off and the server goes and finds the document and reprocesses it. But that gives a wonderful opportunity to make sure that the server caches uh, a version of the last X number of jobs uh, that get kicked off hourly. Maybe I'll go back, uh, you know, uh, four or five days or a whole week, because it's not really that much data. Uh, but I'll make it eat its tail. There's no reason it should stay around. Uh, after a week, the oldest stuff will uh, expire, and part of the scheduled task will be quality assurance to make sure that the Google spreadsheet that is presenting that data to the user has been uh, double-checked for accuracy. Because, of course, that kind of data has to end up in Google Spreadsheets in order for you to collaborate your client into it, to go over the data, to tell them meaning, to, oh, and here's the one of my favorite things. Because it's being stored like a log file, just appending the new stuff to the bottom every time with a uh, date time field, you can do a pivot table. And for those people who have not you know, enjoyed the wonders of pivot tables, that is another way of saying trending lines. Anyone who's in the SEO industry who looks at their SERPs, their search engine result page uh, reports, and sees their positions moving up and down, hopefully up over time, that is the displaying, the graphing of a pivot table, which has rolled up the data 
from the log file. So that kind of stuff is gonna be like one or two click ease within uh, Google Spreadsheets. In addition to, uh, if you do a site crawl, exporting that data uh, to sitemap visualization tools, which are coming online more and more, so you can get a, a visual idea of site hierarchy, uh, which has been one of those holy grails of the SEO industry for a long time. If you wanted that stuff, it was really either super expensive uh, data visualization stuff, or uh, you had to program it yourself in Java using some very advanced libraries and techniques made available by, by IBM Research. Although it was available, could be done. And you saw that kind of stuff mostly in the mu music genre space. You know, those 3D graphs that let you, or, or even two graphs, 2D graphs that let you surf mu music genres, jumping from artist to artist, jumping across genres. That kind of stuff has just hit mainstream in prime time because of some wonderful JavaScript libraries that'll integrate with Pipulate really well. And so I've gone on for 11 minutes here. Uh, I hit some really great points about the uh, Pipulate promotion script uh, that's coming around the corner. And uh, the snow's really coming down and my dog is doing his business. So this is as good a time as any to wrap things up. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe and help me addictively look at my little Pipulate report and see that number go up and get access to the YouTube production facilities and uh, talk to you soon and uh, have a, a good day.